morning out there. All of you here at the chapel, Facebook, YouTube. How everybody's doing this morning? God is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent. I am so glad this morning that the Lord allows the rain to stand back and behave just for a little while for us so that we can have service out here on the ground. I am so grateful. I know our pastor was worried about it was going to rain. I told him I had already put it all in God's hand. Everything was going to be all right this morning. Isn't that right? Amen. Come on, you all. All that are outside, those that are in their cars, will you please just stand?
Father God, that is blessed by you. Father God, Father God, that looks up to you, Father God. Bless the military near and far. Bless them all over this land and country. Father God, we're asking if you will put them in your hand as well. Father God, we're asking if you will just bring up a nation of military, Father God, that respects you. And now, Father God, we ask if you will just bless the tithes and offering this morning. Father God, if you will, just use it for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus that we pray, amen and thank God. Amen, amen. Just want to thank Minister Thompson, Trent Thompson, Minister Deborah Glenn for that prayer. God is awesome, isn't he? Amen, amen. Uh, I don't want you to just sit down on God this morning because God got a word for each and every one of us. But right now, Pastor didn't give me any announcement to bring, but everybody know where's the bathroom? On my right here, up those steps, if you have to use it. And be mindful of cleaning up behind yourself, because we still in a pandemic down here. And I want everybody to be safe and be aware of what's going on around them. Isn't that right? Amen, amen, amen. Right now, I'm going to call around some of the real fans, if they will come up, whoever want to come up and just, we're going to sing a little bit A fight on if you would like to help out this morning. Amen. Come on, let's move it, let's move it. Let's be quick about it.
Father God, you still have us here among the land of the living. And Father God, if it's your will, if it's your will, God, preach this message this morning through your servant. For these and all the many blessings I ask in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 For a subject, I want to use whose vine are you leaning on? Whose vine are you leaning on? Here, I see Jesus facing the most terrible scene in all human history. The Son of God was about to be murdered at the hands of men. All that he had to face was weighing ever so heavily upon his mind. In particular, the reaction to everyone, to his and their faith. He had come to save them all. Few were responding in a genuine way. He was even facing the collapse of his own inner circle. Most tragically, they were falling away. In other words, one of the disciples was in the process of betraying him. Come on now. And I know that you know who that is, but I'm going to tell you anyhow. It was G Judah. One of the spokespersons for the disciple would deny him three times. Mm -hmm. And I know you know who that is. Yeah. Oh, Brother Peter. Mm -hmm. And others' disciples flee and deserted him. And then there was the world of men who were rejecting him. Mm. The religious leaders who strongly professed to know and live for God. Mm -hmm. And the non-religious leaders who had no attachment to God and professed none. But Jesus came to save all, not one was standing for him in the most need for time. Mm. Not one would stand. Is that how we are doing today? We are not standing for God today. Some of us don't even know who he is. Come on now. Some of us come down here to the chapel every Sunday after Sunday and pretend to know who he is. Mm. But we got to be real on this side if we want to see him. Isn't that right? That's right. <laughs> Like I said, but none came to stand with him. As though of it all, Jesus recalled the vine of God, so often described in the Old Testament that the disciple needed to learn a great lesson of vine and the branches. Mm -hmm. The relationship of Jesus to the people of the world. John 15 and 1 said, I am the true vine. Mm -hmm. This is what John is telling us. Jesus is the true vine. Mm -hmm. And my father is the gardener. Here I see the true vine is one of the last I am declaration of Jesus recorded only in John's gospel. Mm -hmm. First of all, he said, I am the bread of life. John 6 and 51. John 6 and 35, sorry. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. John 6 and 51. I am the light of the world. John 8 and 12. I am the sheep door. John 10 and 7. I am the good shepherd. John 10 and 11. I am the res resurrection and life. John 11 and 25. I am the way, the truth, and life. John 14 and 16. And, and 6. John 14 and 6. And then John 15 and 1 says, I am 
the true vine. Don't you know we got some false vine running around here too? <laughs> there are some false vine. When I began to study this lesson, I was looking at the trees and just trying to see how God had put things together about the vine and the branches. But I know in the book, it was talking about the grapevine and Israel was being the branches. And I know that Israel had failed God in all that they did. And so are we doing the same thing today. We are failing God with things that we do. Isn't that right? This I am language goes back to Moses' encounter with God at the burning bush when God identified himself to Moses as, I am who I am. Telling Moses, you said, tell the children of Israel, Israel this, I am has sent you. Coming from Exodus, if you don't believe me, it's right there in the book, Exodus 3 and 14. In other words, church family, I am God. I am is God. And these I am metaphor identify Jesus as God. Mm -hmm. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Mm -hmm. These proclamations point to Jesus' unique divine identity and purpose. Jesus is the true vine. He is the genuine vine, not a false, phony, or counterfeit. He is the real dear church family. In fact, he opposed, resist to the counterfeit, the sham, the deceitful, and the pretenders. We got a lot of people running around pretending. Church family, we should all know that God is the vine dresser and the gardener, the one who carefully plant the vine, waters and feed the vine, He's the one who cares for, look after, and watch over the vine. Amen. God is the one who prunes, purges, clean, and protects the vine. Amen. Simply because the gardener and the vine are one. Right. I understand that Jesus is the vine and mankind are the branches. Whenever I say something about the branches, check out self. I don't want you to look at nobody else. Check out self. But this is the kicker chapter. We will all be judged on the basis of how we as individuals relate to the true vine. Whose vine are you leaning on? There are some fruitful branches and there are some unfruitful branches. In other words, the branches are all those who claim to be followers of Jesus Christ. Fruitful branches are believers who by their living union with Christ produce much fruit. But those on the other hand who become unproductive, those who turn back from following Christ after making a superficial commitment will be separated from the vine. Church family, YouTube, Facebook, unproductive followers are as good as dead and will be cut off and tossed aside. This is the truth we learned from John 15. The key to effective Christian living and powerful fruit producing lives is not much of, is not how much of you, is not how much of the Bible that you know, or how long you pray, or what church you go to. Uh -huh. <laughs> the key to being used greatly by God is abiding in the vine. We got to know who the vine is. Isn't that right? This primarily means that Jesus exists and in his existence, he has qualified of his father. He is the quality of his father. Because Jesus is the vine from which all power flow for the life of his people. Mm -hmm. The branches. Mm -hmm. We get our energy and everything 
from Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Whose vine are you leaning on? Hmm. I can say I'm leaning on Jesus' vine. Uh -huh. How many of you out there? I, I thought about this song, what my sister used to sing. She said, Who, whose side you leaning on? Are you leaning on Jesus? Are you leaning on your own vine? I, I tell you the truth today, if you're leaning on your own vine, you might fall. Huh. Huh? Mm -hmm. Don't get like Charles and hang your rope up there and fall through. <laughs> it's all over with. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Jesus makes that distinction between two kinds of pruning. Cutting off and cutting back branches. Fruitful branches are cut back to promote growth. Mm -hmm. God must sometimes discipline us to strengthen our character and faith. Mm -hmm. There is some fruit branches that are pruned, purred, mm -hmm. has a few bad spots. Mm -hmm. Don't we have some bad spots on us? Mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> Useless bud. We ain't bud not like we used to or like we supposed to. Misdirects you, discolor leaves, get to turning brown, who was you to be green? Isn't that right? But in all, they are cleansed by the word which Jesus has given to men by the word of God himself. The branches that don't bear fruit are cut off at the trunk. And what I mean by the trunk, you cut off at the neck. Your head is gone. Honey, don't let your head be gone. Don't let your neck be cut off. It tells you plainly that you'll be cut off. So we must be about our father's business, doing what we are supposed to be doing. Isn't that right? When you get cut off at the trunk, because they are worthless and often infect the rest of the body. Or the tree. Amen. Listen to me church. God's people. Don't bear. Fruits for God. Or who tries. To. God people that does bear fruit for God. Or try. Will try to block the effort. Of God's followers. Mm -hmm. And they will be cut off. From their life giving power. You see, unfruitful branches are not genuine to bear fruit. Their profession is more profession than possession. In other words, more pretending than being. Mm -hmm. How many of you know some pretenders today? Mm -hmm. I, I'm not telling you to call out anybody now. Just think it among yourself. How many of you know there's some pretenders around? More deception than truth, <clears throat> more counterfeit, phony, than real. It's time out. It's time to be real. Be real about what you're doing. Be real about what you're speaking. God already know our heart. And we better get it right. Because he's sure to come back. Because all of these spots and wrinkles and bugs that are not blooming, they're going to be the car cut off. Isn't that right? God takes away all unfruitful branches by cutting them and taking them away. God is sending a severe warning to every branch in the vine. It's high time that we listen to God's word. These are not my words. When I was reading this, he said, I'm sending it by you to tell my people, this is real. This is real. And I'm sending a severe warning for you to get it right. Mm -hmm. Death is writing a letter every day. And one day, it's going to make it to all of our mailbox. Yes, he want to make sure that your branch is profession 
is genuine enough to bear fruit. Amen. Scripture tells me that unfruitful branches that sin are removed from the vine and destroyed by fire. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. I want to know whose vine are you leaning on? Just the word of God refined men by pruning away all the draw and contamination, pollution and dirt that clings to them. When we as men and women of God come to the word of God sincerely, the word of God shows what we are doing, mm -hmm. what we are not doing, mm -hmm. where we fail and how we fail. In the sin of omission and commission. Mm -hmm. In our knowing and in our unknowing. Yes. Are you with me out there? Uh -huh. My sisters and brothers, we as the branches are cleansed by the mirror of the word of God. Mm -hmm. When mankind looks into the word of God, he reflects both himself and his shortcoming. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, his perfection. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Jesus continued to tell the crowd that God is the vine dresser. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is the vine. And we are the branches. Mm -hmm. He is simply saying to us today that without a connection to him, you and I will not prosper. Mm -hmm. Let me say it again. Without a connection to Jesus, you and I will not profit. Yes. Only in Jesus do we find full abundant life. Mm -hmm. In other words, Jesus makes it very clear that all branches that are not connected to him, they won't survive. Right. As Jesus spoke of himself by saying, I am the true vine. Uh -huh. He is no phony. Uh -huh. You can attest to that how you live it every day. Isn't that right? <laughs> He is no phony because he woke us up early this morning, closed us in our right mind. He is no phony because he allowed us to lay down last night, get a good night rest. And even if you didn't get a good night rest, whose fault is it? Nobody but your own. Amen? He was trying to help us to understand that the value of being connected to him by faith, a deep and growing relationship him, with him will result in peace in all circumstances. I'm telling you, you will have peace of mind if you just keep your mind stayed on him. You will have joy. I don't care how you mess up in this life, but you got to go back to your first love. Isn't that right? Hope in all trials and tribulations. Strength in adversity and joy that cannot be taken from you. How many of you know that joy, somebody will try to take your joy away. Huh? You can't let people take your joy. Huh? The world will take it away, but when Jesus give it to you, hey, you can't let no one take your jaw away. Who's mine? <laughs> I'm asking you today, who's mine are you leaning on? Family, the key to staying connected to Jesus is by loving one another. I can't say it enough every time I get up to preach. You got to love. You got to love one another. Because you, you think you don't love nobody down here, you're not going to get there to be with him. You got to love your fellow man. You got to forgive your fellow man. I know that everybody done had something going wrong in their life. That I don't like this one, I don't like that one. Hey, but you still got to forgive if you want to see the Lord. Isn't that right? Amen. I know sometimes my sister said, you get up there fussing. Nah, I'm not fussing. I'm just saying what the words say. It's all right. I might raise my voice a little bit, but I'm not fussing. But it's God's word. It's God's word. 
You got to take him at his word. Isn't that right? Like I said, we got to be obedient until his holy word mm -hmm. and keep his commandments. Yeah. What did the word say? If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Ain't that what scripture says? Are you still with me out there? Yeah. Many people try to be good. Yeah. Honest people mm -hmm. who try to do what's right. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said that the only way to live a truly good life is to stay close to him. Hmm? How many of you want to get closer and closer every day that he sent to you? Like the branch is attached to the vine. Apart from Jesus Christ, our efforts are unfruitful. Facebook, YouTube, church family, the last question this morning. Are you receiving the nourishment and the life offered by Jesus Christ, the vine? If not, you are missing out on a special gift he has for you. Think about it. If you're not receiving, receiving that nourishment that he has for you, you're missing out mm -hmm. on that special gift. Just how productive are you for Jesus Christ? John 15 and 8 says, By this my Father is glorified, that you bear as much fruit, so you will be my disciples. In other words, Matthew 5 and 16 says, Let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. And it goes on to say, Can you hide, I'm paraphrasing it, Can you hide? A city that is set on top of a hill, it light at night can be seen from miles and miles. If we live for Jesus Christ, we will glow like those lights. How many of you want to glow out there? Even in the daytime, when you're just walking around, somebody can see that light that's shining within you. Church family, let me tell you what some of us do. And I'm going to take my seat. We hide our life by being quiet when we should be speaking. Huh? Going along with the cry just to get along. Being like Peter, denying the life and letting sin dim your life. Mm. Huh? We hide our light by not explaining our light to others. Mm. Rather than explaining our light to others, we'll be mad at them, saying they don't want to do this or do that. Mm. Explain what God has told you to do so that others will see that light shining in you. Stop getting mad all the time. <laughs> And be real in what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So they'll know what your light is all about. For the last, by hiding your light, stop hiding your light by ignoring the needs of others. We got to help others. I know sometimes others don't want to be helped. But there's a time we just got to go ahead on and do what we need to do. Yeah. We got to learn to help others and stop turning our back on them. Isn't that right? Yeah. Jesus is saying to us today, be a beacon of truth. Don't shut your light off from the rest of the world. Be a beacon of truth. Stop lying about this, lying about that. Just tell the truth. Stop shutting your light off. That's why nobody can't, that's why you can't lead anybody anywhere. Because you're shutting your light off. Let your light so shine that others may see Christ in you. And with saying that, who's mine? Are you leaning on?
Amen. That's all he gives me. I ain't gonna try to make up that. Who's right? Who's bad? Are you leaning on? Leaning on the Lord. Amen. There may be some out there that is not leaning on. Branches are not leaning on the right vine. Or you need to be connected to the right vine. So I ask if any of you out there want to get a connection with the Lord, I need you to just uh, either come forth or blow your home. God is real. And he woke us to do what's right. If you are not saved today, Herbert is coming. We're going to ask you to ask that. I know that I believe that we'll be back on uh, Facebook on Wednesday for Bible study. Pastor will put it out there so everyone will be able to have Bible study again this Wednesday. Father in heaven, we come.
come at the towel so we thank you. We thank you, old master, for being so good and kind to all of us. Now, master, we come listen to the whole of communion. Actually, the bless the bread that represents your broken body. Bless the wine that represents your blood that shared on Calvary for all of our sins. Oh, master, we thank you for going to the cross. For us in the rest of the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Everybody have their communion ready at this time. <clears throat> For I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat this. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this and remember me. Eat the bread, eat all of it. In that same manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it and remember me. Drank the wine, drank all of it. For as often as you have eaten this bread and drank of this cup, <coughs> you proclaim the Lord's death until he come. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I pray that everyone, as they leave this place, will be safe and they're going back home. And we're going to have the tithes and offering taken up as we leave the gate. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.